We're working from a function defined entirely out of this table that I've copied over. And so we know quite a bit about its height, its derivative, and its second derivative at certain points and over certain intervals. And from that we're going to be looking for extrema, points of inflection, and in general just sketching a curve of the graph. So here's the sort of background information that's useful. And I've also added, as you notice, the graph ahead of time that we're going to, or the axes for the graph that we're going to be sketching later in Part B. But let's go to Part A. And what we're looking for are relative extrema over the interior points. Note that they aren't even asking about the endpoints. So that issue of whether there are relative extrema at the endpoints is moot. Okay, we just have to find whether it's a relative max or a relative min. And so we know that relative extrema occur where the derivative changes sign. So let's just put that in. where f prime of x changes sign. And so let's just look along that line, f prime of x, it's positive, still positive, it goes to zero, but then it goes back positive. So note that there's no sign change here. Then from here to here it does change sign and from here to the end it's entirely negative. Okay. So the only situation where we have a sign change is here at 2 and that sign changes from positive to negative as I go left to right. Okay. Which occurs at x equals 2. Never mind that the derivative doesn't exist at 2, that's not of any consequence. It's the change of sign that we're interested in. And it changes, um, as we said, plus to minus as we move left to right. Hence, it's a relative max. That's all we have to say. Part B, as I indicated earlier, is the graph. And here we can be a little nervous at the first because there's a lot of uncharted territory. But proceeding in this order where we go from known points to known slopes to known concavity and then try to connect up the information, that's the safe route. So we'll start with the known point of 0, negative 1. Put that in. Then we have the known point of 1, 0. Goes right there. And then the known point of 2, 2. That'll be there. A known point of 3, 0 is going to be there, and then nothing beyond that. Next, let's do the slopes. So we have a very steep slope at x equals 0. I'll just, just for variety's sakes, I'll do the slope in black. A very steep slope here. And then we have a slope that levels off to 0 at 1. A slope that's not defined, I'm just going to put a sort of X mark there to remind us. A slope of negative 3 here at 3. And I'm not going to put in the slopes that are in the intervals just yet. So we've got positive slope here 
uh, positive slope here and then negative slopes here. Let's take a look a little bit at the concavity. So from got positive concavity at the beginning and then so we're looking for a kind of curve like that. Maybe I should have done that in blue. There's no real rhyme or reason to that. I'm just trying to create a little variety. Some concavity there. We've got zero concavity. Totally flat. Right there. From one to two, we've got a sort of positive concavity like that. Got negative concavity in a downward slope. That's going to look roughly like that. And then we have posit positive concavity in a downward slope something roughly like that. And from there we're just left to connect the dots and lines. So we're looking at something that roughly goes like that. Notice that really has to flatten out a lot as we get up to here because not only does the slope go to zero but the concavity. And then something like this. We're not at all concerned that we've got a cusp here at 2 because that's consistent with uh, what they've told us, that the first and second derivatives don't exist, so we don't have to line up these slopes. And then something like this as we go away. That's about as good as you're going to see from me, so probably just time to move along. Okay, let's head on to C. Now, we have a new function. I'll write it out, g of x, which is the indefinite integral of f. We use the t just because we have to use a different variable. It could be anything here other than the variable that's present at the end of the integral. And so we're using the fundamental theorem of calculus here as they ask us about g's relative extrema. Okay, So let's just reiterate what we know. Relative extrema occur when g prime of x changes sign but by the fundamental theorem uh, we have that g prime of x is equal to f of x so the question is really, where does f of x change sign? Well, that's easy. f of x changes sign as it crosses the x-axis. Here, going from negative height to positive height, and here, going from positive height to negative height. f of x changes sign at x equals 1. which is plus, I'm sorry, let's just erase that. Um, it's going negative to positive as we go left to right. And therefore, it's a min. And it's positive to negative as we go left to right and therefore a max at x equals 3. So we found a relative min at x equals 1 and a relative max at x equals 3. Finally we're looking for points of inflection Call that D, 
And let's reiterate that points of inflection occur when the second derivative, when g double prime changes sign. And so that means the slope changing sign. Okay, let's write that in. But um, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, I know I've been a little inconsistent here. Here I call it the fundamental theorem. Here I abbreviate it as FTOC. But in both cases, we're talking about the same thing. And what we're saying is that g double prime of x equals f prime of x. And so the sl where does the slope change sign? Well, we can go back to this graph or this uh, table. Slope is positive, And then it goes to negative right here. Slope changes sign. Uh, f prime of x changes sign. At x equals 2. That's it.